So we learned yesterday a lot of interesting uh, uh, commentaries on the Gemara and exactly uh, how to read the Gemara is a discussion, it's a big discussion because uh, there are a few ways how to read it, how to understand Rabbi Yechanan and Rabbi Elazar. Uh, Rabbi Yechanan said, Halavai, that a person should daven all day. And uh, Rabbi Elazar spoke about the uh, person who's not sure if he davened. And Rabbi Elazar said that you don't, you are not choyzer umespalel, which either meant you don't have to daven again if you're not sure, or you're not allowed to go back and daven again. Uh, and then Rabbi Yechanan uh, says that halavai, a person should daven all day, which either means he's allowed to daven again, or he should daven again. And uh, it's interesting, Rashi over here, who doesn't always tell us the halacha, here he does, uh, even though, you know, this is Gemara, it's not necessarily uh, uh, something that Rashi wants to tell us always, the, the halacha, you know, this is, uh, that's, uh, uh, it's not always clear from the Gemara, but here Rashi tells us that uh, it's about six lines, seven lines up from the bottom of the page, he brings the Sefer Bahag, Bahalachis Kedolois, and that Sefer, he paskin, Pasak, Halacha ke Rabbi Yechanan Besafek, Bahalacha ke Shmuel Bavadai Hispalo. The Halacha is like Rabbi Yechanan if he's not sure if he davin, and the Halacha is like Shmuel if he is sure that he davin. And what that means is that if you're not sure if you davin, then you, sh- you, you, you either can davin again or you should davin again. But if you are sure that you davened already and you're thinking of um, davening a, 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 an extra time, so that would be bevadai, the halacha is like Shmuel, which is that you need to be able to be mechadish davar. You need to add something into your davening to make it clear that this is a nidava. This is a gift davening. This is not a regular obligatory davening. This is a gift davening. You need to add something into the davening. And we spoke a little about that, even though we didn't really learn the Gemara yet on it, but we did speak about it. It's called l'chadesh badavar. You have to add something new to the davening. <laughs> so, uh, and yesterday we did speak about how the halacha is uh, with regard to Kriyashma, why it follows Rabbi Lazar, which means that Kriyashma is biblical, and not rabbinic. We spoke about that. Rabbi? Yes. When you add something to the davening, are you adding something from your own mind, or is it written that what, if you make, that you need to say certain words? What, what uh, is that? Question. Good question. Yeah, you, you would add something from your mind. Like, for example, in the prayer of healing, you would say, uh, and I, you know, I'd like a blessing for healing for, you know, for this and this person, or I'd like, you know, I'd like uh, this person to be healed. And then okay. when it comes to the prayer of, um, you know, uh, wisdom, I'd like uh, my son to make the right decisions, you know, okay. Right. Wisdom. Okay. you should have Thank the right you. wisdom to make the right decisions. And okay. for the uh, blessing of uh, atonement, I'd like to be atoned for this sin. And, you know, for each each of the blessings, you would add a little sentence. But at least one of the blessings, you would add something. You would add a little sentence. Something personal then. Okay. Something personal, yeah. Yes, uh, Mel. Mel, you're muted. It turns out that the Sephardics, you know, they have a lot of extra prayers. Uh-huh. There in the uh, what do they call that nosech? It's uh, nosech, uh, but they have extras, you know, where you put put in for uh, different uh, for 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 sins that you uh, feel that you're you know doing. The uh-huh. supporters have it in their sitter. Uh huh. Interesting, interesting. I, I I'm not uh, familiar with that. Uh, that they actually uh, they add, you know depending on the sin. That's interesting. I, I didn't know that. Rabbi, that's not what it says. I can, t- I can tell you from, for a fact, it basically says, you know, 
you know, uh, uh, please forgive me for all the sins, but at the same time, it says, please give me Parnassa, etc. So it's a general statement of fact that, yes, I have sinned, but please forgive me for sinning. Uh, and please then, uh, you know, provide me with a parnasa so that it would it will be a uh, a good parnasa, not something that uh, that. Uh -huh. would, so, so you're saying in the Spartic, it doesn't have a uh, area. It's in, it's in the Shema Rabbi. Uh -huh. Right, but I'm asking: is is there a place where you would add in specific sins? No. Not that you know of. Okay. No. So maybe Mel is talking. Uh -huh. And then it goes into the request uh, for, you know. For uh -huh. So it's not individualized for you no, to add. No, no. no. Uh, maybe if, Mel is talking about a different Nusach. You have I wonder the, if he's talking about Nusach Ari. Now no, this, I'm talking, this is I'm actually the, talking at Dota Mizrach, which is the Spartan. Uh -huh. And I'll check it because uh, I have the sitter here, and uh, I say I tell you the give you the information of what it's. Yeah, about. yeah, we'd like to see because I know there's a number of different Sephardic nusachs. I know there's the the uh, the Moroccan Sephardim and there's the Syrian Sephardim, and they so uh, Ezra's thing. talking. It's all the same. Ezra's Ezra's they're saying the that they're all the same nusach, but he ha he's he's basing it on the Idut Hamizrach. So Mel, we'll have to see if there's any other uh, nusach that you have, that's that's different. Um, but uh, in any event, uh, that would be um, applicable for a uh, at least the way we you know we normally don't add stuff to the Shemona Esrei ourselves, uh, even though officially in in Shomea Tfila that that is a time when a person could. But I'm not aware of people doing that, of adding stuff. I know we think of whatever prayer we, we have in mind, uh, but I'm not aware of people actually adding stuff in their Shemona Esrei's uh, with words. But if a person needed to say an extra Shemona Esrei for a Nidava, for, for whatever reason, um, you know, they're uh, interested in davening again, uh, that would be... Um, a time when they would they would have to add something in if they wanted to to fulfill that. I'm not sure that people do that anymore nowadays. In Shulchan Aruch, it's brought down that only a person who's consider, who considers himself uh, on a high level uh, would is appropriate for them that they could concentrate fully. Uh, you know, are they someone who would do an extra Shmona Esrei a Tfilas Nedava, but uh, under normal circumstances that. Uh, you know, it, it normally doesn't apply. I don't know anyone that uh, uh, says, oh, I davened an extra Shemona Esrei today. Yes, uh, Mel. You know, even in the beginning. You just muted yourself. I don't know why. You just. Yeah. No, you. Yeah. All right, Rabbi. Yeah. You have to have the sitter in front of you to see. It's uh, called sitter called. So, so in the Orat Sephardic weekday sitter. So uh -huh. it's interesting to note that people you're talking about people who, and of course, uh, I don't know if they if everybody does it, but they they do Tikkun Rachel in the morning. Just uh -huh. to give you an idea, they have they do practically. Then they have uh, uh, pit, uh, they have it called pit, Petichat Eliyahu. I mean, they have so many things that they do. Now I'll get into the Shimonestra, but I don't want to hold up the learning, but I will let you know exactly what they do add, that people can add in the Shimonestra for real that they do, because I also have it on my phone and it has like a little asterisk there that it talks about. Uh, it, it, they're very, very uh, uh, high level when it comes to uh, the, the denim. And I will let you know exactly what they have because there's a lot. They add a lot of uh, here. In fact, they they had a lot of it. And I'm going to go through. I have the sitter right in front of me. I'll let you know afterwards. What okay, Mel, are, are you Sephardic? You're not Sephardic, are you? No. But the thing oh. is, this I since when I had the bagel restaurant for 20 years, uh -huh. I never walked into a Sephardic shul before. This these are the Syrians. They uh -huh. don't, they have, in fact, they're very strict. They won't e even, they're, 
and I know in New York, they won't consider somebody in their minion if they're a, a convert. Uh -huh. That's a very special situation. And uh, the, uh, when I walked into that shul and I saw how they keep their, first of all, they don't put their talus and filling on in the shul. They do it in a separate room. Right, right. It's more than shul And you see how they have their Sifre Torah. You have to be the jolly green giant to pick it up because it's so, they enclose right. Safer Torah like nobody else does. Uh -huh. When I saw that, I was I davened with them because of the time, you know, when you have uh -huh. to go in at four o'clock in right. the morning to right. work. So I used to daven with them every morning uh -huh. after I did dafyomi. So uh -huh. I had a nice schedule. I had the koiches that I was a little younger. But anyway, uh -huh. you know about this in particular about right. the added added uh, prayers that they do have. Right. Right. Okay. I was just thinking because your last name is Safra. I was thinking of the Safra Bank, the uh, the Sephardic uh, owners of the of the Safra Bank, or you know, were my Sephardic. Thing, my my grandmother sent us a letter that there were they that my one of my uh, on my father's side, one of the Sofrim of the Bal Shem Tov was a Safra. So it's better uh -huh. than the banks put together. Uh huh. <laughs> Right, right, and that is also interesting. What you mentioned, you know, there is a there is a safer that, that it's spoken about. The um, actually not just one safer. It's it's brought down in Hasidic uh, writings. Why are most converts from Esav rather than from Yishmael? The majority of converts come from the Esav family from the, you know, from the, from Rome, so to speak, versus from the uh, Arabs, that Arabs are very rare to have converts. And that's maybe why a lot of the Spartic Jews don't have, uh, don't have converts. Um, I think it's based on that discussion of what, you know, like, why is it for some reason, the, um, it, it either is because it, I've seen both. It's either because the, um, the souls of the the Arabs are either too high to want to convert to Judaism. They don't feel the hunger as much as the as the uh, B'nai Esav, or possibly the opposite, because they're so low. Therefore, they uh, do not have the desire to convert, uh, while the um, uh, the, the those that are from Asov do have a more of a desire. So anyway, it works, but it seems like there's two uh, two views. It's either because they're they're so, but anyway, it's interesting that the Sephardic Jews were not familiar with, uh, you know, with with uh, accepting converts as much as the Ashkenazic Jews were, because the Arabs never, you know, were never didn't want to convert as much as the um, as much as the um, uh, the B'nai Asov, the uh, descendants of Asov. Yes, uh, Ben. Ben? Ben? I wanted to say there is a simple explanation that the Muslims, if they convert, yes, get I'm murdered. talking, if the Muslims convert, get they killed. get a death sentence. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They're right, not okay. allowed to convert. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, there's a, there's a Hasidic reason behind that not just a physical reason. There's a, there's a deeper reason, I should say. Okay, in any yes, event, yes. Uh, I, I, connected to the soul. But, but they're not allowed to convert. Right, right. But I, I guess what it means is, do the, how, how many of them have a desire to convert? That's, I, I guess that's what it boils down to. Do they have a strong desire to convert or not? Is it, is it common for them? They would, you know, they're not gonna, let's say, but do, would they have such a desire? And well, according to these... Well, well. Now, yeah, I, yes. would agree, I would yes, agree I would. with the Aesop side. Uh, it's uh, uh -huh. it's definitely that that side, the hunger coming from Aesop. Right. As exactly. I, I look hunger. now, I used to be more Aesop than Yaakov. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. So it's definitely I would agree with. You. Okay. Anyway, thank you. Uh, um, yeah, but interesting. Good. Good point, Ben, and uh, thank you, Avram. So uh, back to the Gemara. So the. The Gemara that we're going to start now is at the two dots, and it's uh, the first wide line on the page. It's Va'amai Rabbi Yehuda Amar Shmuel. Rabbi Yehuda says in the name of Shmuel. 
If a person is standing during his davening, he's in the middle of davening, he's saying Shemana Esra, even his car, and he remembered Shehispalel, that he already davened. So he, he's in the middle of davening, and he remembered that he already davened. I mentioned to you, this is this is common if you have an early minion. Sometimes, you know, you, you say, oh, let me daven at the early minion. And then later on, you you forgot that you actually davened early uh, at the 2 o'clock, 2.15 minion. And then it's uh, 8 o'clock at night and you go and run to daven. And then in the middle of Shemana Esrei, you say, uh-oh, I think I just, I think I davened. I, just, I, I, I davened a few hours ago. So v'nizker says, "Bal poisek, you have to stop." Va'afilu be'emtza bracha, even in the middle of a bracha. So you're in the middle of davening shmona esrei. You stop even in the middle of a blessing. Aini, the Gemara asks, "Is that so? Is that so that you stop in the middle of a bracha?" V'ha'amar Rav Nachman, didn't Rav Nachman say ki havinon be rabba baravua? When I was by the house of Rabba Baravua, Bon Mine, we asked him, Hani Bene Be Rav, these students of the yeshiva, the Tau that made a mistake, Umidkari, and they remembered, and they, I'm sorry, they mentioned, excuse me, they mentioned the Choyal Beshabbos. They mentioned the weekday Shemona Esrei on Shabbos. So what do you think they should do? They mentioned the weekday Shemona Esrei on Shabbos. Now, we just said that if a person davened already, and now he's in the middle of Shemona Esrei, he should stop where he is and say goodbye. Close the Siddur. Stop your middle of Shemona Esrei. You're already davened. And here we had a question if uh, people were in the middle of uh, Shabbos and these uh, they they were saying the Shemona Esrei, and instead of saying the Shabbos Shemona Esrei, they said the weekday. They were in the middle of the weekday Shemona Esrei. So the question was, Mahu Sheyigmaru? What is the din? Should they finish? What is the din about them finishing? Should they finish the bracha? And the way Rashi explains it, should they finish the bracha if they remember in the middle of a bracha, in one of the brachas where they made a mistake? Should they finish? Va'amar lan, and he told us, goimrin kol oisa bracha. You finish that bracha, and then you go to the Shabbos Shemana Esri. That means that you say, you started saying, ato chaynin l'adam das, and you're, 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 Remember then that it's Shabbos. So Rabbi Baravua told us that what you were supposed to do is finish the bracha. Finish the bracha, say whatever, finish the paragraph. And then you go to the Shabbos Shemana Esri. So why in uh, the earlier case did we say Rabbi Yehuda, in the name of Shmuel, said that if you make some mistake, you, you stop where, where you are. Stop where you are. Don't finish anything. So it would seem that not only you should finish, uh, you know, if, if, at least finish the bracha. You're in the middle of a bracha. Finish the bracha. Finish the Shemana Esrei, maybe. Here he says, you, you finish the paragraph. And there he said, stop, even in the middle of a bracha. So the Gemara answers that in one case, it's not a bracha levatola. In the other case, it is a bracha levatola. In one case, it's not a bracha in vain. In the other case, it is a bracha in vain. Why is that? Because on Shabbos, you're really supposed to mention all of the weekday brachas. That's not in vain. The weekday brachas are not in vain. We really should mention all 18. But the rabbis established that, you know what, it's Shabbos. 
as an honor for Shabbos. We're not making you responsible to mention all of those 18 brachas. But if a person started one of them, finish it. You started it, you could say it. It's not, it's, it's not wrong to have a bracha on Shabbos. You just don't have to. You started it, end the bracha, and then go to Shabbos, and then say the Shabbos part of the Shemad Esri. However, when it comes to davening, and you already davened once, you're in the middle of davening a second time, and you made a mistake, and you thought you have to daven, and you realize that really you had davened already. So here... The halacha is you stop where you are because whatever you say further is going to be a be a bracha of It's going to be a it's going to be a bracha in vain. There's no need. There's no that you already davened. Possibly even a bal toisif. You're considered to be adding on. So it's a little. It's it's a here. It's 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 a it, there is a difference between these two cases. Let's read it inside. These are different. Literally, hachi is this, hashta now, this now. But it means these are different. Hachi hashta. Hosam gavra bar chiyuvahu. There, the person is obligated in reciting all 18 brachas. hu And the rabbis did not burden him. Mishum covered Shabbos because of the honor of Shabbos. But here, he already davened. He already davened this. He already said this. So here it would be a brachal of Atala. And there, it, it, it's, it's not because, because he really should say, the other 18 brachas, the, the other brachas from the regular Shemana Esrei, and the rabbis just didn't burden him. Okay, so that's this Gemara. And now we have another statement of Rabbi Yehuda Mershmo, but I think that Ezra, did you have a question, Ezra? I saw someone had their hand up. Ezra, did you want to ask? No, him? no, no, it wasn't no? me. Uh, ben, did you? Ben? Yeah, I, I wanted to say, I saw also that it says, Chachamim kavu sheyachol lekatser mechvod ha-Shabbat. Aha. Where do you mean lekatser de de shmona esre shelchol velavor le-Shabbat? So in other words, the rabbis didn't obligate us to say the weekday shmona esre, and all we say is the Shabbos paragraph. Otherwise, we would need to say both. And it would be much, it would be very long. Right. So the rabbis didn't obligate us. What, what are you reading from? Do you have the Hebrew Steinsaltz? What, what, are, you, what, what are you reading from? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Very nice. Okay. So uh, the next Gemara is, Vama Rabbi Yehuda Shmuel. Rabbi Yehuda says in the name of Shmuel, his palo v'nichnas l'beis ha-knesses, the person davened and he entered shul, u'matzot tzibar mespalolin, shemespalolin, and he found that the community, the congregation, is davening. It's interesting. The word tzibor stands for tzadikim, benonim, urashayim. That uh, a tzibor is <laughs> any yid. Every yid is included in a tzibor, in, in a congregation. No matter how righteous they are or not righteous, they're all included. In fact, we learn that from the Miraglim that we just read about in the Torah this past week, that the Miraglim, we learned, yeah, I need to have a minion because it says Ada. The word Ada means a congregation. And who is it referring to? It's referring to the 10 tribes that were bad, that they are the source of a minion. That means that a minion can have even Rishoyim and they're still considered part of the minion. So, uh, if you go to a shul, the, the, back to our Gemara, we're three lines up from the bottom. Rabbi Yehuda says in the name of Shmuel, Hispalo v'nechnas l'beis ha-knesses, if a person da- en- uh, davened, and he entered a shul, umatza tzibar shem espalolin, and he found a, the community, the congregation was davening. 
So he davened already, but he sees that the, the community is now davening. Im yachol l'chadish badavar, if he's able to add something new, and this is what we were talking about earlier, if he's able to add something new, yachzer v'yispalo, go back and daven again. V'im lav, and if not, al yachzer v'yispalo, don't go back and daven. So these are the two statements of Rabbi Yehuda Amar Shmuel that seem to be either adding to what Rabbi Yechanan said or arguing with what Rabbi Yechanan said. Rabbi Yechanan was of the opinion about a person davening all day. And here we have, uh, number one, if a person did daven once and they're in the middle of davening, they should stop where they are. They're in the middle of davening the second time, they should stop. And we have another Rabbi Yehuda Shmuel statement that uh, if a person did daven before, he is allowed to, in certain circumstances, daven again, which is similar to what Rabbi Yechanan said. Rabbi Yechanan earlier said that halavai, uh, a person should daven all day. And here he's saying that if you can add something to your tefillah, <coughs> Then you could daven again. And uh, the question, of course, in the commentaries is, if Rabbi Yechanan also ha- holds that you need to add something new into your tefillah to daven again. In other words, when Rabbi Yechanan said, halavai, a person should daven all day. That means he'll daven, he'll daven again, he'll daven a third time. That when, when he davens the second, third time, is that mean that he has to add something new in his davening, or does it mean that Rabbi Yechonon argues on this? And Rabbi Yehuda Mershmul says, you got to add something new to your davening. But Rabbi Yechonon, he said, no, halavai, you daven all day. It doesn't matter if you add something new. And then it goes back the other direction. Rabbi Yechonon's case, the case that the Gemara brought Rabbi Yechonon about, was a case of Suffolk. We're not sure if he davened. Now, is that case the same as the case later where a person knows he davened, but he wants to daven again? Rabbi Yechonin's case is we're not sure if he davened. So we're going to tell him daven again, just think, even though you might have davened, daven again. That, that was Rabbi Yechonin. So Rabbi Yechonin's case is called a case of Suffolk. We are not sure. Now, Rabbi Yechonon might also talk about a case where he is sure. Rabbi Yechonon's opinion might apply to both, when you are sure, when you're not sure. So therefore, it could be that Rabbi Yechonon says you don't have to add anything new, even if you're sure that you doubt. On the other hand, it could be that Rabbi Yechonon says, no, when you're not sure, you're suffix, then you got to daven again. You're going to daven a second time. And now you don't have to add anything new. But if you are sure you davened already once, then when you do daven a second time, you will need to add something new. So again, I'm just sharing with you that the commentaries debate, there's there's different opinions as to uh, Rabbi Yechonon's view, how it fits with these these views. Now, I I, I, I read for you Rashi, and Rashi says the halacha follows Rabbi Yechonon in a case of Suffolk, and it follows Shmuel in a case of Vadai. And what that means is that Rashi is learning that they argue, and that the halacha follows Rabbi Yechonon, not that Rabbi Yechonon and Shmuel agree in a case of this, and they both agree in a case of that. No, the halacha follows one of them in this case, and it follows the other one in the other case, which means that the way Rashi understands it is that they are arguing, but the halacha ra- follows one view in one case, follows the other view in the other case. So again, there's two cases here. There's the case of Suffolk and the case of Vadai. The case of Suffolk means Suffolk means we are not sure. He may have davened before, he may have not. We're not sure. And in that case, Rabbi Yechonon and Rabbi Elazar spoke about that case earlier, and Rabbi Yechonon said, Ulevai, that a person should daven all day. And then later on is a case where a person for sure davened already, and he went to shul, and he sees their davening, and he has a thought, maybe I should daven again with them. And 
and this is called a case of vadai, and the for sure daven before. So this will definitely be an extra davening, and um, and the halacha that Rabbi, the, the the din that Rabbi Yehuda in the name of Shmuel says is you can only daven again if you can add something new, and otherwise you should not daven a second time. And I we also mentioned yesterday that what does it mean to add something new? We said it means to add something new. Official, the best is preferably to add something new to each of the middle brachas. You know, there's three beginning brachas, three end brachas, and in the middle of the Shemana Esrei, there's uh, 13 middle brachas. And those 13 middle brachas is where you should add something new if you want to daven a second time. Again, as I mentioned today, we, we, we don't really da- encourage people to daven extra uh, dava, but uh, here... Uh, the, the Gemara is talking about davening this extra nedava, this gift davening, this doing an extra davening that uh, a person would ha- should add something new to each of the brachas. If he couldn't, if he doesn't add to each of the brachas, he should add at least to one of the middle brachas, and uh, preferably not. It should it shouldn't be the bracha of shemet fila, the final bracha of those thirteen brachas, because that bracha you always can add something new in, and so therefore it should be one of the other brachas that you're going to add something new to. Uh, if you're going to add only one bracha, it shouldn't, should not be the final bracha called Shemeya Tefillah that Hashem listens to our prayers. Now, uh, there is a view that I want to mention, although it's not the accepted view, but the rush brings down an opinion that what does it mean if you can add something new? He says it means if something new came up since you davened, if something new came up that you have a reason to daven for, then you should die to daven again. So for example, you just heard about some uh, uh, situation that, uh, you know, you want to daven for, after you already daven the previous davening, something new came up that you feel you should daven for, the Rosh says, then you should daven. That's what it means if you can be mechadish, something new, means if something new came up in between the last davening and this davening. Again, that's not the halacha, that, but that is mentioned, it is an opinion that it means if you could come up with something new. If, if something new, I'm sorry, something new came up. Now, the Gemara is trying to figure out at this point, do we have, well, one second, do we have any questions? Any, yes, uh, Rabbi. Yeah, Susan. Uh, yeah. Is there any, is there any prayers in the Torah that are considered so sacred that they are, they can't be spoken by a, 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 an individual who uh, is just a regular regular, you know, somebody like me. <laughs> Are there any prayers that the Torah says this can only be said by the Rebetzin or the or so, uh, somebody, you know what I'm saying, asking? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think if there's any, can anyone think of any prayer like that? That's only for an elite group. I mean, the, the Berchas Kayanim is said by in the shul by the Kayhanim, by the priests and the regular Jews uh, don't do that in public. I mean, we don't, uh, you know, we don't do the berchas kayanim uh, to the community. Um, I think, uh, you know, of course, if someone asks for a bracha, I guess you could, you could give him without, you know, you could give him the uh, the berchas kayanim. But the uh, actually, the Torah treats every Jew as an equal. Is that not correct? Well, to a certain extent, equal, but we still we the still uh, can say. What do you want to say, Ben? The, is everyone equal? Uh, of course, every, I mean, equality, but, but it doesn't mean everyone does exactly the same thing. You know, everyone's unique. Everyone has their individuality as well. And uh, the Kohanim are in their group. The uh, Levites are in their group. The Israelites, the Talmud Chacham, the scholar, the, the, the rap. You know, there are, uh, we do have respect. The elderly get respect. The, the scholar gets respect. So, you know, every person has their thing. Yes, Mel. Mel, you want to say something? Yes. There is no such thing. In other words, all of our prayers are important. The Gemara tells a very interesting story about a person who wasn't educated. And, and in the Beis Hamikdash, there used to be challahs left at the, at the, at the uh, altar all the time. And he assumed that Hashem himself was coming down from heaven and eating those challahs. 
So what happened? He was doing this each and every night. And then all of a sudden, the Koyan Godol came by and he saw what this man was doing. And I believe it says in the Gemara, he insulted him. He says, what are you kidding? God's not coming down to eat these, uh, <clears throat> these chalas. So uh, that night, the Kohen Gadol had a dream and Hashem came to him and said, I have so much <laughs> from that poor person that he brings me the chalas that tomorrow you're going to, you better say your, your last rites because tomorrow I have to, at night I'm taking your neshama away because of that. Because you took that, that, uh, that simcha from me right. and right. baked his challah. <clears throat> so anything that you say to God is accepted. In any words, and there's no such thing that somebody has a higher right to say anything other than that. In your prayers, you could keep my name in your prayers because I know <clears throat> that you're really love Hashem. You're doing great. Thank you. So, Yasha um, Kaich, I just want to correct the, 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 mm -hmm. that story that you mentioned, Mel. Um, it's a story where Moshe Chagiz says in his book, Mishnas Chachamim, that uh, uh, he heard it from reliable people in Sfas. It's a story from the 16th century. Um, so it's not about the base of Migdash, where uh, someone, uh, a, a uh, uh, a convert moved from uh, Portugal to Tzfas, and um, a converso Jew. Does that mean a convert? What does a converso Jew mean? Converso, converso is somebody who's converted. Converted, okay. Okay, and he moved converso, from... A converso yeah. was converted under duress. Under duress. Oh, it means a Murano. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, they, they call them. Uh, on, <clears throat> there's another term, not Marana, as um, as Raymond has said before. There, um, there's another. There's a Hebrew term for anusim. For, anusim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anusim. Right. The unwilling. Un the unwilling. Right. Okay, so anusim. it's not a convert. A a um, um, well, like an, a Marano type of uh, situation where. So uh, he moved to Tzfas. He was overjoyed to be able to fulfill the. Uh, the mitzvah, uh, you know, the mitzvah is in public. Anyway, so he um, he heard a talk from the rabbi about the showbread. So this was a, a story where he uh, he he brought the, sh the, to the he brought it to the shul and tzfas and the shamish of the synagogue uh, would would eat it. And uh, anyway, so th that's the story. So, but it, it's it um, in the in the end. Um, Every Friday, the caretaker would come along and happily eat the delicious challahs. And every Friday night, the Jew from Portugal was, <laughs> would inform his wife that once again, their offering was accepted. So one Friday, the rabbi in the, was in the synagogue later than he was staying in the synagogue later than usual. And uh, uh, it was the same rabbi who had given the speech about the showbread. And uh, he was the one who inspired this uh, Murano to bring this, to bring it. So he was standing on the bima and uh, reviewing the sermon, and he sees this congregant coming in with two loaves of bread, walking up to the ark and putting them inside. And uh, he didn't realize that the rabbi was watching. And the rabbi uh, at first was silent. Then uh, he became angry. You know, he says, "You stop, you fool! You know how could you? You think Hashem eats and, and drinks?" Uh, and uh, anyway, so uh, probably the shamish who ate them. If you think so, and ate them. Uh, so at uh, um, the rabbi immediately confronted the shamish. Tell this man why uh, you come here now, and who has been taking the chalas he has been bringing each week. So the caretaker admitted that he was the one. He wasn't embarrassed at all. He couldn't understand why the rabbi was so angry. So. <laughs> As the rabbi continued his rebuke, the man burst into tears. And not only uh, uh, had he not done a mitzvah, he had sinned. And uh, so he apologized to the rabbi for having misunderstood his lesson about the showbread and begged him to forgive him. He left the shul in shame. 
And shortly afterwards, a messenger from the Ari strode into the shul, the famous Ari HaKadosh, and approached the rabbi. He told the rabbi to go home and say goodbye to his family, prepare himself uh, by the designated time his soul would be returned. Anyway, so that's a, that's a story. But it, it's not from Beis Amigdash. I just wanted to correct that. Wow. Incredible. But it's an interesting story. Uh, in any event, um, you can look it up. I just I found it online because I thought so. I didn't think it was a story from the Beis Amigdash. But um, in any event, uh, uh, let's let's go back to what we were talking about. Rabbi. Uh, yes, Moshe. Rabbi. Yes. Okay. You just said about the Kohanim, the Birkata Kohanim. It, it, that is not uh, for the elite to say. That, that's it's said right in the um, the, uh, the the blessing of the children. You know, you you know, Yisamecha Elohim Kephraim Imanasha Ibarecha Hashem Yishmarecha Yer. I don't well, I don't want to say Hashem's name, but I mean this this bracha is part of the uh, Birkata Kohanim. You know, it's 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 got the uh, it's the blessing for the children on, on, on um, Arab Shabbat. I, I'm not disagreeing. So we say I just it, don't we say think. It. Says it. We say 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 it when we come home from from shul. Right. You know, to, we give our the uh, you know. You not give only the, that, you say it every home. morning when you say the morning blessings. Of course, of right. course. When you right. say it, all, yeah. But what I'm saying is that but, it's not forbidden for everybody to say it. It's, just the Kohanim. Right, but it's, I, it's I think in a because... shul setting, I, I may be wrong, but I think in a shul, in a communal setting for the for an Israelite to give that blessing uh, in the shul, I think is wrong. I think it's given special to the Kohanim to say. I and think that no it's Kohanim, that... you don't you, you know you don't have an Israelite get up there and say it. But it's uh, in the when at the time that it is that we say it, we uh -huh. footnote it so to speak. We we say. Yeah, the, the, Kohanim, the Kohanim, as right. the Kohanim say, uh, and they then you give the the Birkata Kohanim, right? But so in any Rabbi event, the uh, Hazen says it you too. know, if you talk about and equality, so you you could say that it's it was given to the Kohanim to do, and that there you know there's something unique about the Kohanim that the Israelites don't do. I mean, I, at least in my show, we don't have any Israelites getting up there and, and doing it we do give respect to the Kohanim. The Kohanim get the first Aliyah. There are certain things that, you know, you can't say everyone's e really equal. So, you know, I, I just, I, I still I still hold my ground. I, I mean, you, you, you're welcome to argue, mm -hmm. but uh, I still think that um, there is there is an element there of uh, respect that we're giving the Kohanim to give that bracha. Okay, now, I, but I, you're right. I, I don't know for sure if there's a prohibition. I'd have to look it up. Uh, you know, the blessing that the Kohanim give, does that mean an Israelite is not supposed to, we're not allowed to give it in public? Uh, I'm not I'm not 100% sure if there would be a, uh, a prohibition. I'd have to see if there was the, uh, uh, you know, halachic code, uh, uh, what, what's written about it in the uh, and the laws. Okay, Ben? Rabbi, Rabbi, yeah, in our shul, the Chazan says it, and the Chazan is not always a Levi or a Kohen. In the prayer, in the, in the prayer on Shabbat, the Chazan says it. Right. So it sounds like you proved me wrong. <laughs> right? Uh, but the thing is, what does the Chazan say? No, the Chazan I says, no, I'm give us, saying... it, it, it's a good question, yeah. I, 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 I might be wrong. I, I'm not disagreeing. It's, it's possible. I don't know. Uh, but if, if you look at that blessing, um, it, it, all he's saying is, the Chazan is saying is asking Hashem, please bless us with the blessing that the Koyanim give, Yivarech Hashem V'Yishmerecha. So he's not saying, I'm blessing you with the Yivarech He's right. saying, Hashem, bless us with the Yivarech right. that the Koyanim give. So is he saying Yivarech right. Again, the Koyanim do the bracha, Yivarech They give us a bracha. Yeah. But when the Chazan says it, he's saying, Hashem, please give us the Kayanim's bracha of Yivarech Hashem Yishmerecha. So, you know, I don't know. You know, I guess that's a good question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, in any event, um, the Gemara here, we have two, uh, we have two statements that we just read. Now, in both statements, there's something that repeats itself. Rabbi Yehuda, in the name of Shmuel, says something, 
And it repeats itself in both of these statements. The one thing that he says that repeats itself, the one thing that he says that repeats itself is that you are not allowed to daven a second time. If you daven once, you cannot daven a second time. In the first statement, he says that by saying, even if you're if you're in the middle of saying it a second time, stop. In the second statement, he says that im lav al If you can't add something new, do not, do not go and daven again. So, why does why is there a statement? of Shmuel that seems to be repetitious. He's pretty much said that in the first statement that you're not allowed to daven a second time. And he says it in the second statement, you're not allowed to daven a second time. Uh, again, he does add some interesting points, uh, but the, the idea, he, in other words, he does mention that you could daven if you could add something new. But the statement of you're not allowed to daven a second time seems to be repeated. And that's what's surprising. Why does he repeat that prohibition of reciting a prayer a second time? So the Gemara says, Utsricha, and they are both needed. We need both of these statements. There's something that we learn from both. There's a reason why he said it the first time. And something that we learn from it the second time as well. There's something unique that we learn from both of these statements. Again, if a person davened already, he's not allowed to daven a second time. There are scenarios where he could. He's not sure if he davened the first time. Uh, he, he is sure, but he can add something new. You know, there are scenarios that this doesn't apply. But as a general rule, person who davened is not allowed to daven again. And he said that twice. So the Gemara says, Utsricha, and we need both of these statements of Rabbi Yehuda in the name of Shmuel. De'iyash mi'inan kamaisa, because if it let us hear the first statement of Rabbi Yehuda in the name of Shmuel, that he should stop in the middle. If he started davening a second time, he should stop where he is. If it only said that statement, Hani Mila Yachid Biyachid, I would think that that applies for Yachid Biyachid. If the first time he davened, he was davening alone. And when he started davening a second time, he's davening alone. And he realized that he already davened. Stop where you are. That's what we tell him. He's not allowed to daven again. I would think that that applies in that case where he started davening as an individual and he second time he davened and he's in the middle of it and he's a davening as an individual. Turn the page. Oi, tzibor v'tzibor. Or another scenario, another example, where I'm now 21B, another scenario where a person would daven, um, uh, we tell him to stop davening where he's at is if he started davening the first time he davened with a community in a co congregation and he has 10 yidden that he's davening with. And the second time he went to shul and he dav started and he started davening a second time with another minion. And now he's in the middle of Shmona Esrei and he realizes that he already davened once before. So in such a scenario, we tell him, stop where you are. Don't go any further. Aval, but yochid legabe tzibor kamandalite solidum. But if he was an individual, the first Shmanesri, and the second one, he's with a congregation, you may think that a individual relative to a congregation it's as if he didn't daven at all. It's similar to as if he didn't daven. And therefore, you may think, oh, you're with a minion now. You're in the middle of Shemona Esrei. I might think, yeah, you know what? 
daven now. It's fine because you're davening now. It's like a different davening. You, the first davening, you were alone. The second davening, you're with the congregation. It's like a different davening. And Kamash uh, Malan, it comes and lets us hear that the second statement of Rabbi Yehuda Amar Shmuel, that you, what is the second statement? You entered a shul, you davened, and you entered a shul, and you see a congregation davening, and here it tells you, don't daven. What do you mean? I'm going to a shul. I'm with a congregation. No. The, the second statement of Rabbi Yehuda Shmuel says, no, don't daven. Oh, you can add something new? Okay, then you could daven a second time. But you can't, you don't have anything to add new? Davening with a congregation is not considered something new, something special that would make you eligible to daven again. You're not eligible to daven again. It, so from the first statement of Rabbi Yehuda Shmuel, you might think that you're eligible to daven again and you could continue davening or you could start davening with a congregation because a congregation maybe is on a much greater level when you daven with a congregation, it's a, it's a much greater davening. And therefore you might think you could daven a second time. The second statement of Rabbi Yehuda in the name of Shmuel pretty clearly tells us, it implies very nicely that you cannot daven again. Well, it pretty much says it though. It says you cannot daven again. It, unless you could add something new, fine. But otherwise, you cannot daven again, even in a shul, even in a congregation. It says very clearly, you enter the congregation, you see them davening in a shul. You see a community, a congregation davening. So that's why we need the second statement. What about only saying the second statement? Maybe all it should say is the second statement, and I would automatically know the first. If it said the second statement here, Mishum, because the layaschilba you didn't start. Avol Hasam, but in the first statement of Rabbi Huda Mershbul, it's mentioning something important that if you started already, even in such a case, you stop where you where you are. Avol Hasam, the askilba, ema loy. I would think you don't have to stop. Sricha, therefore, it's necessary to tell me that you need to stop. So that is the two statements of Rabbi Yehuda in the name of Shmuel, that each one is necessary to tell us that you're not supposed to daven again if you once davened already. So what comes out from this Gemara uh, is that if a person is not sure if they davened, in that case, at least the accepted halacha is that you do not need to add anything new in your davening you are allowed and you should daven another time. In this way, you fulfilled your suffix. You've gotten rid of your question because you are davening something, uh, you're davening and it's a suffix. It's uh, quite, you're in question if you davened already. And therefore you daven now it's considered like you're adding something new. Why? Because since you might have davened already, therefore this davening that you're doing, and you're really exempt from davening because it's a rabbinic question, you're really exempt. This that you're davening a second time is clearly, uh, is clearly a gift davening. It's an extra davening. And therefore it's considered uh, that you don't have to add something new to show that it's something extra because this that you're davening it itself shows that it's it shows that it's a uh, it's not an ob obligatory davening because you uh, you're not sure if you daven so this this that you're davening now is considered ein chiddush gadol mizeh. There's nothing greater than the fact that you're davening because you might have davened already. This is. Uh, demonstrating that it itself, that it's an additional, it's an extra davening, and therefore you don't have to add something new. But if you did daven already once before, whether you're in a shul now, you're not in a shul now, if you wanted to daven a new Shemana Esrei, you would need to add something new. 
Now, I do want to mention that it's, it is brought in, in, uh, in the Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch and in the Mishnah Brura, uh, that uh, something that uh, I think Ezra mentioned, that a person should have in mind that if he davened already, this would be a nedava, this is a gift, Shemana Ezra. If he didn't daven already, this is considered fulfilling his obligation. So this is a, uh, it is an obligatory, in other words, he never davened yet. So this is a, he's fulfilling his obligatory Shemona Esri. So he has in mind either one, whether if he davened before, if he didn't. So this is brought in the, and um, in, in, it's, it's, it's brought from the Rajba. The Rajba is one of the Rishonim. He mentions this, this, and I see the Mishnah Brewer brings it and uh, the Alter Rebbe brings it in Shulchan Aruch. That a person should have that should should have that in mind that he's uh, sort of like a condition. So this is the uh, this is basically the continuation of Rabbi Yochanan's uh, statement before and uh, the you know how it it all seems to fit in place is Rabbi Yochanan speaks about the Suffolk case or the halacha follows him in regard to Suffolk and the halacha seems to follow these opinions of Rabbi Yehuda in the name of Shmuel regarding Vadai, regarding case where he definitely did daven already. I will tell you, I once had a scenario where I davened early Mincha and later on I went to Shul and I forgot that I had davened and they asked me to be the Chazan. And uh, I was in the middle of the repetition of the Shemona Esrei. And that's when I remembered that I already davened. And at the moment, I, I thought about it for a second while I was in the middle of my Shemona Esrei. I said, no problem. Let me daven now as a Nedava, as a gift Shemona Esrei. I'll do a gift. I'll do the extra Shmona Esrei now. I'm in the middle of the Shmona Esrei. I'll, uh, I'll do the gift Shmona Esrei, add something uh, new, you know, maybe for a word, a little word. And uh, uh, I'll do a gift Shmona Esrei. I'm all set. No problem. I don't know, you know, it's, I don't have to stop. Otherwise, I would have to stop in the middle of the Shmona Esrei and announce, sorry, guys, you know, <laughs> I, I already daven Shmona Esrei. I can't be doing this uh, I can't be, I, I shouldn't be the chazan. I made a mistake. So I, 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 I had in mind that it's a gift. However, later on, I looked it up and I realized that I made a mistake. Although That's there is fine. one view that says what I did was okay. But what did you do? I just what, continued. Did you tell anybody? I didn't, I didn't need to tell anyone. There was no need. I had in mind that it's a gift, David. Bye-bye. So I, at the time, you know, I thought I, I, I was, I thought it was fine. And therefore, you know, I just finished up and uh, had no problem. But uh, I, I found out later, I looked it up and it turned out that although there is one view that says like I, like I did, but that's not the accepted view. And I really should have turned around and said, sorry, guys, I already davened. You got to, you, now the rabbi can decide if he wants to have someone else uh, go up to, to do the repetition. Um, because I already rabbi. said that, you know, they probably would have had to put someone else up to start the repetition from scratch because I already davened. The reason why is because you can't stop in the middle from, from one Shemana Esrei that was an obligatory, if you have in mind that you're davening an obligatory Shemana Esrei, you can't jump in the middle and say, no, I'm going to start doing a, um, a, a, a gift Shemana Esrei. You can't do that. It, it's either one or the other. And the greatest proof is the statement of Rabbi Yehuda in the name of Shmuel. He's in the middle of davening, and he remembered that he davened already. What does the Gemara say? You got to stop. Rabbi, Rabbi. you got to stop. It doesn't say you could have in mind to, uh, to, to have something new and, and, and just continue and, and do a gift. So that would be the proof 
the source that that you know that you really have to stop. You can't do a shmona esrei that's half an obligatory, half a gift. If you're going to do a gift shmona esrei, you got to start from the beginning. It's got to be a gift shmona esrei, and that's basically the the accepted view. Yes, uh, uh, Phyllis, you've been. Yes, yes. thank you. Um, 